Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And it's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. And this is the last one, ladies and gentlemen, before Christmas Eve. Let's check them out. All right, we're gonna start today with a couple of brand new Knife Center exclusives that just landed. And this one in particular, well, they're both pretty nice, but I really like this one too. This is the Kaiser Sheepdog Mini, which we've upgraded a few different ways. And the introductory price on this right now is just 120 bucks. So it's already a pretty good deal for a, uh, a full fat mini sheepdog as opposed to some of the, uh, the Vanguard lower end versions. But for one thing, linen micarta handles in black that look and feel just really very, very good. Linen, of course, has a little bit of a finer weave than typical canvas micarta, and it, uh, it does a little bit to make it feel a little bit more premium than some of those canvas choices out there. Gold pivot collar as well, and the superstar of this is a CPM 4V cleaver blade. 4V, of course, is a nice tough powder metallurgy steel. Uh, if you're familiar with 3V, it's not quite as tough as 3V, still very tough, but it does have better edge retention than 3V. And I always like the idea of a, a real tough type of steel, a real hard working down and dirty steel like this, even though it's pretty high tech, on a hard working blade shape like a cleaver. There's just something about it that really jives in my head. And it's just a really nice design to, uh, to see these materials on. Blade length about 2.65 inches, 4V, like I said, bit of a stone washed finish. So it's got that rugged finish to go along with the rugged nature of the steel. Nice shape for utility. You've still got enough of a point where you can uh, do some tip work, do some piercing with it. It's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be unusable in that regard. It's actually quite usable. Flipping action, still great. It is a Kaiser. There are ball bearings in the pivot and a liner lock to hold things open. And even though this is a smaller knife overall, this is the kind of knife that feels bigger in a way. It feels, well, maybe not bigger, but it feels like you have a really good opportunity to do some heavy work. It doesn't feel like it's gonna give up on you. But even though it's just a three finger grip for me, it's a nice solid hold you get on this knife. But they're really cool and the introductory price right now is just icing on the cake. Like I said, 120 bucks for the time being. All right, this next knife is another Knife Center exclusive. This is the Alliance Designs Mini Slim Pickens Knight Rider Edition. And this is another blade like that Kaiser that feels like it can do some heavier work without being an overly large knife because it does have a nice, comfortable handle. Aluminum in this case, with a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a stone wash finish. It's not quite uh, a black stone wash, but there's a little bit of texturing visual texturing, like a, like a slight tumbled finish going on there. But it is a smooth handle, it feels very good. Contoured, fills the hand quite nicely. And to set off that handle, we've got some red accents, and it's red G10 in these cases, both with the backspacer and the pivot collar. That's actually a G10 pivot collar on both sides rather than an anodized material. Milled pocket clip here on the back, button lock on the front, and that's of course one of the big selling points of this knife. And the blade itself, again, Slightly on the smaller side, only 2.8 inches, so it's under that three inch mark, but you've got a lot of capability despite that quote unquote smaller size. The steel here is LMAX, and you've got a PVD coating and a hollow grind on this knife, so you've got a nice thin edge going on. Now this is a flipper. You can kind of flick it closed by pushing the button lock down. You can flick it open as well, but it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of wrist movement to do it. Instead, just go with that nice subtle flipper tab. I really like that execution. It's very gentle the way it comes out, but it works quite nicely. Alliance Designs Slim Pickens Knight Rider Edition uh, price. I didn't mention 360. All right, right about the same price at 350. And this is actually pretty big news right here. It is a Birch Tree Blade Works design, Michael Birch made by Riot to bring that price down, which as far as I know, this is pretty much the first time he's worked with an outside company like this to produce sort of a high-end mid-tech version of his designs. So it's a great time to be, uh, be looking to get into a Birch design right now. Blade length, just over three inches, uh, M390 steel. Now the profile is a harpoon tipped Tonto blade, as you can see, no compound grinds here. It is just a hollow grind all the way through. You do have a hint of recurve here at the back section before you hit to the, uh, the change in angle out there. Really nice looking shape and you've got contrasting grain directions as well, which is quite nice. 
the handles, you've got integral titanium bolsters and green canvas micarta, but there is carbon fiber and a natural canvas also available. It is a frame lock, or some folks would call this a bolster lock, but I don't like to, so I'm going to call it a frame lock anyway. Folds up quite nice. No flipper in this case. It's uh, just thumb studs here, and they're nice, simple thumb studs in a way that, well, maybe I shouldn't say simple. They're elegant in a way without being flashy. They're just nicely finished, and they work really nice as well because still got ball bearings in the pivot, so you've still got that great flipping action just without the, the finger flip. Now, if you like the uh, the high-end production feel of a knife like this, if you're familiar with uh, with what's out there, but you want a new version with a flipper or a new knife in that genre with a flipper, got a new Best Tech here for you to check out. Check out, uh, and it's a little uh, a little cheaper too than that Birch, uh, starting at just two twelve. This particular one I'm holding right now comes in two twenty one. Now, I guess I should tell you the name of this. This is the Free Fall, which is a Jason Clark design. Blade length here, about two and three quarters. So a little bit smaller than that birch, of course. And of course, it's got a narrower profile overall. Uh, but this is a flipper. As you can see, we've actually got uh, two tabs, essentially. You've got that leading edge tab there, which can be used sort of like an Emerson Wave, but we're not going to call it an Emerson Wave. But you can use that kind of as a pocket deployer to catch the hem of your pocket as you're pulling, pulling the knife out, and it'll deploy that for you. S35VN on the blade steel here. And you've got that flat grind with the uh, full length swedge essentially. Really nice profile or a really nice cross section for day to day stuff because you've essentially removed that point of drag along the spine thanks to that long swedge. So it's going to be a pretty nice knife for moving through materials, especially around curves, which is going to be good. Just like that birch, the materials here, we've got titanium with titanium bolsters, not integral in this case. You can see a little bit of a seam where they've uh, attached that bolster. But the handles, I think, are where this knife gets really cool. Now, there's a couple of different uh, topographic G10s that they have here, but this one is a carbon fiber, but it is a red-black carbon fiber. And it's essentially uh, cut end grain, so it's got a very different look than a lot of carbon fiber typically does. In fact, with these particular colors, you can see the, uh, the red bit there a little more on the edge. It's almost a coppery look, but it almost looks like wood, which is really cool, especially for a synthetic material like that. It's also got some grooves, essentially like undulations that help it feel a little bit more natural as well, kind of like a cross between, between wood and maybe bone or antler or something like that. It's just really nice. And this end grain, this cross cut carbon fiber has just a really nice matte texture and a really nice feel under the fingertips. It's very special, you guys. Definitely a great gentleman's flipper. You've got a deep carry pocket clip, deep carry milled clip here, which you don't see too often. Single position only, which is probably to be expected. But you can see there it holds that nice and deep. And it's just a great little usable sub three inch bladed knife. Yeah, really nice, really fancy, and just some really cool materials going on. All right, next we've got a couple of American made items from K-Bar and it's their new Space Force collection, USSF. It says it right there stamped on the Ricasso. And this is their Space Force themed set of tools. First of which is the Mark II fighter, the classic K-Bar. This version is the K-Bar Space Bar. There you go. Kind of a, a whimsical title, but I really actually am surprised at how much I like the colorations going on here. You've got a gray coating on the uh, the good old 1095 Crovan blade, as well as the hilt and the uh, the pommel there at the back, and this sky blue craton or grippy synthetic material here for the handle. Looks really cool, and it does do a little bit to kind of de-weaponize the, uh, the classic K-Bar. So that's a uh, definitely a consideration, I think, in some circles. But apart from that, it is the K-Bar. It's the Mark II. Seven inch blade, 1095 Crovan, like I mentioned, made in New York. Nice grippy handles, nice swell to them with a slightly oval shape so it indexes quite nicely. You've also got a gray sheath to go along with this knife and clicks in. And it kind of reminds me a little bit, uh, I'm sure they've done this with the Mark II before, but I can't remember for sure. But the uh, K-Bar's Ek combat knives have this type of sheath where you've got essentially some positive or extra retention from the back. And you can you just push that back with your thumb to help pop the release. And uh, it's going to give you some more retention, which is cool. 
And you've got a standard uh, belt loop here. You've actually got uh, whatever this, this kind of toggle is where you can actually thread other straps through that as part of your retention system. Snap for the handle. And then of course you've got some rivets and slots here in the, in the sheath itself. So you could use your large and small tech locks if you'd rather carry it that way. All right, next up from the Space Force knives, also made in New York, is the Bridge Breacher tool coming in about 70 bucks. Uh, and if anything, I think they should have called this one the Space Bar. It just seems appropriate in this case, but they didn't. This is the Bridge Breacher tool. Now, as the name suggests, this is just an oversized pry bar. You do have a 1095 Crovan. Again, it's about a, what's that, a quarter inch thick or so, maybe a tiny bit more. Uh, no, that's about a quarter inch. And you've got uh, a blue, almost like a plasti dip here on the, uh, the end to give you a little bit more grip when you're actually using it a little, uh, you'll be able to flex it a little more without the edges of the steel digging into you. Then there on the end, pry bar tip, of course, you've got a nail puller there in the middle, some hex wrench sizes here in the middle cutout. And then you've got, it's not a sharpened edge, but you've got essentially one big chisel grind on the side here that comes down to a pretty fine uh, plain, essentially, like I said, just shy of sharp. So you would be able to put some force, concentrate some force uh, onto that, do some uh, some cracking or breaching there. Uh, enterprising individuals out there may even be able to put an edge on that pretty easily if you were so inclined. Now there's no sheath or anything with this knife, but I did want to show you the box here. Uh, underneath the sleeve, it's just a typical K-Bar box, but they do have the new uh, Space Force sleeve with their new logo, which is kind of NASA inspired, which again, this really makes me smile when I pick these up. All right, last but not least in their new collection is one of their imported folders. This is the Courser coming in about 34 bucks. Now, as far as the handle on this knife goes, I'll start there uh, because I don't have one here to compare it directly to since they've been discontinued, but it looks pretty much exactly like the old handle from the Johnson Adventure Blades folders that they did for a while. And I'm glad to see it back because they've done some good ergonomic things here. Mainly, you've got a nice swell here. Uh, normally I like to see that in the middle of a handle, but it's a little bit further forward, but it is very comfortable, both in a standard kind of hammer grip and especially in a pinch grip. It kind of, it creates a nice contour for your, uh, for at least my thumb and forefinger to rest in there quite well. Two position pocket clip, just standard, uh, standard non deep carry back lock there about two thirds of the way back. Very easy to use, but of course you've still got one hand opening with the blade here three and a half inches OS eight steel, which is quite nice. So you're getting a pretty, pretty good price for the materials, at least in the, uh, the blade steel that you're getting right here. That's a nice little design. Again, I like the colors here more than I thought I would. Again, it's one of those things that uh, makes a, a tool seem a little more like a tool and a little less threatening. So I definitely, definitely appreciate that. And something like this is going to be great in a glove box or as a beater knife or as uh, the, the budding space enthusiast out there, or just a new uh, new beginner's uh, beginner knife out there. But that's it for now in the K-Bar Space Force collection. Uh, I, I dig them. We'll see what's coming next as well. But next, we've got the new Sage One from Spyderco, now sporting gray G10 handles and a Maximet steel blade coming in just over 206. The Sage series, of course, it always has a number after the word Sage and that denotes what lock it's using because the whole Sage series is named and is designed to kind of showcase a lot of the different innovative locks over the years. And the Sage one is the liner lock designed originally by Michael Walker. So you, sometimes it's called the Michael Walker lock, but that's what you get with the Sage one. It's actually one of my more, uh, more favorite Spyderco designs because I like Spyderco blade shapes actually, but I tend to be a, a drop point person in general. So this is sort of the perfect blend between a more traditional drop point and that kind of Spyderco aesthetic. Blade length on this is ostensibly three inches. Although when I measured this one, it's just a hair hair over that. So keep that in mind. Great blade shape, traditional type of Spyderco cutting geometry with the full flat grind. And then you've got that full handle despite the smaller blade because you've got that full size finger choil there around the pivot and enough handle length there. Even for someone with slightly larger than average hands like myself, I've still got a little bit of extra space there at the end, which is quite nice. But then of course it folds up into a very easy to carry size because of that choil as well. Reversible wire pocket clip, not completely deep carry, but pretty close. And that gray is not really gonna shout out too much when it is sticking up above the pocket. Very cool knife. And it's always good to see another Sage in the lineup. 
All right, next up we've got a new, or a new old Civivi actually. Uh, the Praxis was one of their uh, inaugural designs when they first introduced the brand. This new version comes in uh, 4250. We've got a 9CR series stainless blade. So you've got 440C levels of performance there. Nice black coating. And moving back to the handle, it's a Civivi, which if you're familiar with the brand, you could probably guess uh, what would be going on here because they do a few things very well and consistently, and that's G10 for the handles, liner lock, ball bearing pivot, and a reversible deep carry pocket clip. It's all here for the taking. Another knife, it's got a nice good sized handle. This is gonna be a pretty good working knife, especially for that uh, just over $40 price point. I can get all four of my fingers on the main section of the handle, no problem. You do have a finger choil there in front of the flipper. It's not super huge. Uh, so folks like me, I do have larger fingers. It's a little bit cramped for me, but I can get my fingertip in at the, uh, the back of that for a little more detail work. And I'm just gonna take another minute now to admire the blade shape here. This is the type of shape that's right up my alley. Nice graceful drop point, almost continuous curve to the edge. Fine enough tip, it's not a, a super acute tip, but still very usable day to day. Just a great shape, nice flat grind, ready to go. All right, next up we've actually got in stock now some uh, a couple versions of the SIG K320. This has been a really hot knife made by Hogue, of course, if you're not familiar. And this is actually, uh, I think one of the first times these have been on the shelves long enough for me to run it in one of these videos because you guys have been buying them up super quickly. Uh, there are two different locks, an able lock, which is a crossbar lock, as well as the automatic right here. And the versions here have a gray handle as opposed to the black or coyote of the other versions. As you can see also, we've got two blades. We've got the drop point as well as the Tonto. And again, I'm a drop point fan and I really like this blade shape here. It's three and a half inches long, S30V, black coated with a nice high flat grind going on. Great working shape. They've got an interesting thing going on here with their finger choil on this knife. You can see here the edge doesn't go all the way back. They've essentially left uh, a small, I don't like to use the word nubbin, but that's what it makes me think of. This little bit of, uh, of steel here that drops down that's unsharpened to act as a little bit of a guard even when you're choked up in that choil area. It's a nice little kind of safety feature. You actually see something similar in the way Spyderco does their things. They just grind uh, at a slightly different spot, but you still get that with the Hogue here. So I definitely appreciate that they did that. As far as the rest of the handle, it's a polymer frame. You've got, again, all four of my fingers, no problem, but then you got the choil for even more reach. There's a little bit of a texture to these handles, but they've left a nice flatter spot where the, uh, the pocket clip hits and it is deep carry and reversible. It's actually a four position pocket clip and it still manages to be deep carry in the tip down position, which is pretty impressive. They've also given you a couple of nice ridges on that clip as well to make extraction a little bit easier. You've got more, more grip essentially on the clip itself, but it doesn't get in the way when you're uh, putting it back in the pocket. It just looks pretty cool. Last but not least, the only thing we haven't really talked about is the action. It is a push button side opening automatic. You do have a safety there, which you can lock it in the closed position. Snaps open, very satisfying indeed. And then you can lock it in the open position as well so that that button, even though you can push it down, it's not going to go far enough where you can actually disengage that blade. But Hogue's been doing a great job lately, and this is just the latest of their models that we're really excited about. And I can tell you guys have been too, because I haven't been able to get my hands on them either. So there you go. Two new automatic versions of this knife in stock right now, at least when we're filming this. Oh, prices. I didn't mention prices on these. Nice and affordable for what you're getting, especially considering it's American made, automatic, just about 145 bucks. Next, another automatic, and this is uh, more of a limited edition piece or a, uh, a not standard edition anyway, a new version of the SBR, that's the short bladed rock eye from Les George, built of course by ProTech, and this version comes in at about 525 right now, but check out what you're getting. First off, it's a Damascus blade, and this is a Chad Nichols Virus Damascus. Really cool looking, executed of course really well by ProTech, but check out that aluminum handle right there. It's got what they're calling the Del Fuego finish. Really cool. It's, you know, Fuego, of course, fire, and it looks like an inferno. Really cool. 
Now this is limited uh, to just 50 pieces and each one of the handles is gonna be unique. It's uh, no two are gonna be alike. So that's really cool. You've also got a nice uh, mother of pearl accent or inlay there in the button release itself. Deep carry pocket clip on the back, typical Protec style. It sits in a pocket in the aluminum handles and you've got flush screw head. So nice and easy to use, no snags when you're going to put it back in your pocket. And I do recommend putting it back in your pocket. Even though this is limited, it is a cool design and it's a very useful blade overall, very useful design. Blade size, uh, about two and a half inches, Protec action, good to go. And I don't know, probably one of my favorite Protec finishes I've seen yet. All right, next up is something that's been out of stock for a long, long time, and we've been eagerly awaiting, it to, uh, awaiting its return, the Cold Steel Master Hunter in 3V, coming in at 160. The Master Hunter is just one of those kind of August designs from Cold Steel. It's one of the classics, and it works really well. Blade shape, kind of right up my alley for an outdoors knife, four and a half inches long, full flat grind. It's got my favorite stone washed finish and of course 3V steel. So it's gonna be nice and tough for those heavier uses without sacrificing a ton of edge retention. It does, uh, it's not gonna hold an edge as long as something like M390 or stuff like that, but really solid performance in the field. It's got that classic SRK style of handle, rubber overmold on the top of the full tang and fairly neutral shape, even though it is like a little blocky, but not uncomfortably so. You do have a nice swell there to fill the palm a little bit, and you do have a finger guard there at the leading edge to help with your, uh, help keep you from slipping forward, something I always appreciate on a survival knife like this. They call it a master hunter, which certainly would make a good hunting knife, but it would be just a fantastic survival knife in that price range as well. Sheath is Securex, so it's a injection molded clicks right in. You've got your uh, belt loop here at the back, mesh webbing. You've got Velcro with a snap there to make it easier to get on and off, but it's going to be really hard. You'd be really hard pressed to have that snag off of your belt. And then of course, you could use your uh, your tech lock attachments as well on this particular sheath, thanks to the, uh, the excellent selection or the, <laughs> the abundance of rivets and slots there in the sheath itself. But anyway, they're in stock right now while we're film, filming this. Get them while they're still here because this is one of those knives that is definitely worth the wait, but you don't wanna wait, do you? Get it now while you can. All right, last up, we've got something that would make a great gift for kind of the, the EDC gear guy or gal or yourself. It is the Prometheus Design Works PDWSFPB, which is standing, standing for Straightforward Pry Bar. Uh, it's not a very straightforward name for a straightforward <laughs> type of design. 64 bucks on these right now. Now the materials here, you've got a titanium pocket clip, fairly deep carry, but it also has a nice uh, point here for your keychain if you wanna carry it that way. And the body itself is stonewashed D2 steel. You've got a few different functions built in. Of course, you got a bottle opener, that makes it a multi-tool. Well, that plus any one other function makes it an official multi-tool. Oxygen tank wrench here, pry bar at the tip, and essentially a sharpened notch uh, for using stuff like a ferro rod. So this would be a decent survival tool. Uh, you could also do other scraping tasks. I have a feeling you might be able to kind of shave a pencil down a little bit if you needed to sharpen a pencil, if you, you know, still happen to use a pencil day to day. But of course you could sharpen the tip of this up to be uh, sharp as well if you'd like. This is D2 after all, and it's gotta be hardened or else that striker section wouldn't work. So you do have that option out there if you wanna sharpen the edge of this. It's actually gonna feel fairly comfortable in the hand. All the edges are chamfered and the jimping, which is on both sides of the body is not super sharp. It just gives you a little bit of texture without biting too hard. It's just a really nicely designed little tool. Feels very premium and we can get all of this for about that $65 price point. Great, great thing to put under the tree this year. And actually last but not least, I got this cool K-Bar Space Force box here. Um, these don't cost you anything, but you have to buy the knife and we'll, we'll throw you the, the box in for free, but you, you want that, don't you? <laughs> I do. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Make sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite knives were this week. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. While you're over there, do make sure you sign up for our Knife Awards program, because if you're going to buy one of these knives, whether for you or someone else this year, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Happy holidays, everyone. See you next time.